Hello, my name is Courtney Payne, Associate Editor at ASHRAE Journal. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, part of the ASHRAE Journal Supplier Webinar Series to provide information of interest to ASHRAE Journal readers and others about products and technology of interest to industry professionals. ASHRAE does not review supplier webinar presentations. The following presentation has been prepared by SimPro on the subject, Using Software to su Succeed in Changing Times. Today's speaker from SimPro is Nick Carter, Business Development Manager. In this position, Nick excels in helping field service businesses streamline their operations and finding solutions to increase profitability. Nick has provided business consultations and support for a wide range of trade professionals and he is passionate, passionate about eating and their success. Nick resides in sunny California with his wife and two daughters. Nick, the microphone is all yours. Well, welcome everyone to this uh, webinar. Um, once again, my name is Nick Carter, and I am not that Nick Carter from the Backstreet Boys, so don't worry, I won't be singing or dancing. Um, as you can see by the picture, I don't really look much like him. But um, I have been with SimPro for almost two and a half years now and been able to assist many customers and companies similar to yours in fine-tuning what they're doing and streamlining and simplifying aspects of business and being able to help them to be successful across the board, which is kind of what we all want to do, right? We all want to be successful. We all set certain goals for ourselves, and maybe when you're starting a business, your goal is to be able to relax by the beach or go golfing or be able to uh, manage your future or hand it down to your children. But, you know, somewhere along the way, sometimes there can be difficulties that pop up. So we'll discuss those today. A little bit about Simpro, who we are. So we are a field service management software platform. So just real quick, we have over 150,000 users worldwide. Um, we have desktop apps, and we also have the mobile capabilities. Um, we work with projects, with maintenance workflows, and with service. Um, we help you get set up and situated and implemented. We have online help, but we also like to do that in person when we can, as we know things have changed quite a bit. And we integrate also with multiple accounting pro platforms, and we can work with so many other ones. Um, you know, the company was started basically just to help customers do what they plan to do, like we spoke about in that last slide. What were your goals? How can we get you to reach those goals? And that's how we got started. So the agenda today we're going to talk about is a little bit about the field service industry. Um, we'll talk about four methods to, man to, to manage your business. We'll talk about workflow, projects, automation, of maintenance, and reporting. And then we'll also talk a little bit about how to manage your transition because we know people love change, right? And the last part you'll see is question and answer. So if you have any questions at all as you go through, as we go through this webinar, please go ahead and put those in under Q&A so we can answer those at the end. And there can be questions about, uh, about Simpro, about just software, your company, the industry, even sports if you want. I've been, I've been lacking with no football on um, yet, no preseason or any of that stuff started, no basketball and baseball. So if you want to talk about sports, we can do that too. I'm a Cowboys fan who's America's team. So if you have anything bad to say about the Cowboys, we won't go any further. But anyway, so let's get right into our agenda and what we're starting with. So the first, the field service industry today. So what do we know? Well, we know things have changed quite a bit over the last few months, haven't they? I don't care where you are in the world or where you are in the country, COVID-19 was like a, a punch right to the face for any businesses that were running, whether we were central businesses or not. And now we're still dealing with it. And we're still dealing with the second wave they're talking about coming in. Regardless of where you stand on, you know, what COVID-19 is and, and how it affects you, we know it affects all businesses. So we know we've had to change, you know, even how we interact with companies. The increased health and safety measures for field and office staff. So when you're going to your customers, how do you have to prepare before you walk in the door, before you approach them? Or within the office, how does everyone interact with one another when your guys have to pick up parts or get work orders or all those kind of things? Do they have all the, um, the correct uh, things they need, PPE or all those types? We can see this guy in the picture does not have his mask on, so obviously he's either in a place where they don't need it or he's breaking rules. <laughs> we'll just say he's somewhere that's not requiring masks right now. Um, there's a need for flexible service models. So maybe you've done business the one way your, your whole career and the whole time the business has been running, but now things have to change. So now you've had to make changes and make changes on the fly and then make changes to those changes, right? It's a very flexible and, and, and fluid environment in which you're in. Um, concerns of the second wave means remote work should be a potential option. 
we met with a lot of customers and a lot of those customers had put off starting software. You know, you just, we'll get to it at some point. And, and, and as soon as we have time, you know, you never really have time for these things. Well, when COVID hit them, now they said, well, I wish we were paperless. I wish we could work remote and they're not able to. So now a lot of those customers are coming back to us saying, what can we do to get prepared so we can do that? Um, um, so let's see here. Um, how about some job sites? that have to use new safety regulations or requirements that could result in fines. So this could affect you guys, right? This could really affect you if you have these things that jump up and now you're paying multiple thousands of dollars because you're not taking care of what you need to do in those, in those uh, positions. So, you know, we want to make sure we're staying up to stuff on those. And also HVAC, are, I mean, HVAC services are needed just as much as ever. You know, we've talked to customers and they're like, well, a lot of people are working from home now. So problems that they were dealing with at home have now affected them because they're at home more. Before they were gone for eight to 10 hours a day, going to their job where, they, where you know, air conditioner was fine or the refrigeration, and now it's an issue. Or ones that worked with restaurants and those things who had to be shut down for a while, well, now they need work done. Now they need the refrigeration taken care of. Now they need all those uh, different aspects that you guys take care of now. So you may have seen it slow down as COVID first hit. But then now, as we start to kind of come out of this first one, even though it looks like we're jumping back into another one, who knows what's happening there? Businesses and people, regardless of residential or commercial, still need assistance. So overall, the field service industry today is topsy-turvy. No one really knows where it's going to go. We're all kind of scrambling. But by putting ourselves in a good position, we can be successful throughout this. Um, so now let's talk a little bit about a work service workflow. So now, yours is going to be different, of course, and there's going to be different permeations. This is kind of a basic workflow that we can kind of discuss when an order comes in for something that needs to be serviced. You get that request in, whether it's a phone call or whether it's an email, and then you create that work order. And then what happens the next thing, you go to schedule the job, and if you can't fix that job there, you're going to quote the job. Um, you're going to assign your technicians, put your materials on top of that, and then you're going to complete that work. You're going to get all the details. You're going to invoice the customer. You're going to process it. Now, in here, there's a lot of places where things could go south or where things could go sideways, right? Because when you add a lot of steps, you give a lot of options for things to do different things. Um, we'll talk about a couple of those, and you guys may agree with me on those. And like I said, feel free to, um, to, to, to give me, uh, put some uh, stuff in the Q&A so we can get you all set right there, all right? Right, so where the workflow can fall apart. Admin staff waiting on job details from technicians, which slows down the invoicing process. This is a big one. Right, you got your guy in the field, and we have a customer. He was, he was in the field, and a dog attacked him, and he put his, um, his clipboard in the dog's mouth and then ran. So he wasn't going back for that work order. Right? So it was what it takes. Or we get the ones that fall underneath the seat of the truck, and then now it's under there, and they don't, um, the technician doesn't see it for three or four days, three or four weeks, two months. And then it's forgotten to get invoiced. Now you have to invoice someone quite a bit later. That can be problems. Even the job details from each technician. It's funny, you talk to technicians, some technicians will do a job and give you a whole book of information, like pages and scrolls down on the type of dog that was there and the color of the curtains, whatever, all that information may not be needed. And some just give you one word answers. And you're like, I need more than that, right? We need to find somewhere in the middle was great when you can have software because it can help you in that way by saying, hey, here's the information we need each job so we get consistent information. How about not knowing what materials you have in stock? Yeah, so your guy goes to a job. He needs a part. He says, well, I think we have one in the office. I'm going to leave the job. I'm going to go to the warehouse. I'm going to search for the warehouse. I can't find it. Then I'm going to have to go to the supplier house. All this is time, and time equals money, right? Wouldn't you agree with that? Um, so if you could know what was in stock at all times, and your guys in the field could also know what was in stock. Or you could even say, hey, what's in your vehicle? Let's have a, a list of supplies that we always keep with us so it can assist us when we're doing those jobs so we don't have to keep running back and forth if we have known objects that we need. Or knowing what's on the other guy's trucks. Hey, there's a guy five minutes from me. I can go get one from his truck. So knowing these things, but this is where the workflow can fall apart because now you keep, keep having to go back to those jobs back and forth, and depending on where you live, I live in California, so you could go five miles and it could take you an hour. It just depends on the time of day and what's going on at that time. 
Um, spend excessive time looking up past labor rates or material costs when quoting. So this is interesting. You're quoting a customer, and they say, well, the last thing you, you were here, you gave me these rates. Well, how do you know if they're telling you the truth or they're trying to get you to a good price, right? Being able to know what those are, those labor rates, even setting those up for specific customers or specific groups of customers can really help in putting together quotes. And then losing job attachments. We know everyone deals with this. Let's get a picture before we start the job. Let's get a picture after we start the job, right? And then all of a sudden, those pictures don't make it from the phone to, to, to the software or to, to the office. Or the phone gets dropped and all the pictures are gone. Anything that could happen. So losing job attachments can also be one of the places where that workflow can fall apart. So how can we improve this with software? Well, automation is the key. So what is automation? Automation is when one thing happens, the next stage needs to be put into motion, right? So it's not forgetting what happens in between all those stages. Things aren't falling through the cracks. We have customers that, you know, they, they have, um, once a job is quoted, then they say, hey, within four hours, we need to make sure we have someone scheduled for this job. So it's not forgotten. And two, uh, two days later, they're like, did we schedule someone for this job? And now the customer's calling back and saying, is someone supposed to come out here? And we're like, oh, yeah, they're coming out tomorrow. And then you move everything on the schedule just to make the customer happy. But by automation, it really assists you in being able to not let those things fall through the cracks. We almost talk about our software like this little person that runs around the office tapping everyone on the shoulder when something needs to be done so things aren't falling through the cracks. It's also going to be very, very helpful because you're going to see where you start to have issues. You're going to see where you start to have log jams. Um, where, where, where people are getting overwhelmed with work just for the fact that, you know, that it, it, it's difficult for them because there's too many things on their plate. Well, once you start automating things, you're going to start to see who has what role and who's doing what job. How about easily transition tasks from role to role through the job process? So you know this. There are many hands on any kind of jobs, even, even on service jobs. Well, does everyone know what they need to be doing on each one of those sections? So now you can transition them from one to the next, even move things around if you have to, based on that job. And keep field staff from making multiple trips to the office. We spoke about this already. The more you can get done on that first trip, the better. Once again, time is money. You don't want that time to be behind the windshield of a work truck or a work van. That doesn't help anyone in the end, right? So you just want to make sure that you're able to, to do the best you can as far as limiting those things. And that all comes down to knowing what you have knowing where it is, knowing why you have it, how long you've had it, how many you have. All those things can help you in making good choices and moving forward. All right. How about the HVAC work, project workflow? So now this is a little different than service, of course, because there can be multiple phases, multiple steps. This can go over multiple days, weeks, months, years, however. Once again, this is not the, um, the, the only type of flow, but this is you know, just a sample. You have your request for a project. You're going to create and present the quote. You're going to win that bid, right? You're going to start um, planning the project phases, assign the materials and, and, and schedule technicians, track projects because you want to find out if you're making money through the project, not all the way at the end, manage that budget, and then invoice and process payment. You may have change orders in here. You may have um, progress payments in here. You may have multiple different permitting, all those kind of things. But this is just kind of the basic workflow. So where do we see issues when we talk to our customers on pop-up? Well, one is no clear picture of a project status. So where are we in the project? All right, are we on budget? Are we on a time budget? Are we losing money at the beginning because of issues that are beyond our control or issues that are under our control? So when you don't have that clear picture of what's happening, it's difficult to make decisions moving forward. If you don't know what you're doing now, how are you going to know what you need to do in the future? I'm losing track of cash flow. You know, are you doing progress payments? Are you just charging for the materials? Are you using a percentage? Are you using just a, a flat rate number? You need to know where your cash flow is. Are you using technicians that maybe you don't need to use that technician? We'll talk about that here in a minute under labor resources. Are you using the right guys for the job so you're not, over, you know, using someone that's overqualified? Miscommunication. Now, you know this one is big, and I know every one of you may be nodding your heads right now as you go through, think back to some of your jobs that you've done, your big, your, your, your big uh, contracts and jobs, that miscommunication is big. You know, I thought we were supposed to start this this day. I thought we were supposed to do this then. I thought we were supposed to bill for this portion of the project now. I thought we needed to have pictures so we can send it to the customer because the customer is asking what's going on. I thought we needed 
all these different things can, can affect you. And miscommunication is the cause for a loss of a lot of money just for the fact that um, when things ha- – when you have to make those phone calls and you continue to make those phone calls, well, you, you need to call Joe or you need to call uh, Mary or you need to call whoever, and you're waiting for those phone calls to come back and you can't work until that happens, you're wasting time. Time is money. And you know if you own a business or you're running a business, how each one of those things adds up. It's funny, when we talk about time, you could say, well, it's only half an hour in a day, right? Well, at the end of the week, that's two and a half hours. At the end of the month, that's 10 hours. You can see where I'm going there, how you're paying for all those hours, but you're getting the maximum amount of resources used. And then once again, ineffective use of labor resources. Are you using the right type of labor for those jobs, or are you, um, are you, are you paying a lot of money for certain labor for jobs that you could do less? Well, how do you know that? Well, you know, you, you try, hopefully software can assist you. Let's talk a little bit about how software can assist you. Um, when you manage your projects with software, you can understand exactly where your project stands today. So what is happening right now? Are we losing money right now? So in Simpro, we, for example, we use uh, work in progress reports. We have Gantt charts. So we have uh, profit and loss reports. Of course, you're able to see those. But what's happening with your projects now? Is there a way that you're going to say, well, hey, we're losing money at the beginning. We may have to do some, do some things at the end of it so we can really make this through so it comes under budget, so we can still make profit. Um, by using these kind of reports also, you're able to see where was my project when we did a similar project last time? Where were the problems we made? Let's document those problems so we don't use it on the second one. Because sometimes, you know this, that a part of learning is looking at the mistakes or the things that you may have not done in the best way before and not replicating those same problems. Um, how about we could see where you're making money with job costing and reporting, and you could connect those to project manager features. So you can see what portions of that project are doing well and what portions aren't, right? And that's important. Let's find out where you're making money. Managing projects is also great because once you start using software, you're able to start looking at prior, prior projects and see whether or not you were asking the right amount of money, whether or not you were costing them correctly, whether or not you were underbidding yourself just to get the job, but in the end you end up losing money. You know, that doesn't work for anyone, right? So, um, so, so using software now enables you to see these actual figures and not just kind of figuring those out in your head. And then provide regular updates to customers. Yeah, phones ring. How's my project going? I drove by. It doesn't look like anything's happened to it yet. Or what's happening here? What's delayed and why? Being able to provide regular updates and having software to let you know when you need to send those updates is huge. Having software so that it can send those because you can add pictures and give your customer a customer portal, for example, and they can look and see the progress on the project. That's one of the things that Simpro provides is a customer portal so your customers can go in there. They can, you can even send them tasks so they have to get things signed or if they need to create another work order, all kinds of fun stuff. But, um, yeah, regular update. The less your phone rings that's not a sales call, the better. Right? The less you have to answer the customers and start to scramble and start to look for data so you can give them answers, the better. That's not what you want. You want those calls coming in because people are requesting business for you. So the third um, workflow we'll talk about is the maintenance workflow. So now, what maintenance workflow, a lot of people are trying to make sure they add this as a revenue for their company. And this is huge, being able to add this uh, maintenance workflow so you can get those checks coming in each month and you can have, you know, you know exactly what's happening. Install equipment, you, you sell the maintenance contract, you record your asset details, create recurring jobs, create a job with test readings and checklist items, schedule, complete it, and you get paid. So there's a lot of things in here. A few of these things are really important. For example, you want to get that maintenance contract. And if you're selling maintenance contracts, do they go up each year for inflation? Are you remembering to make sure you charge for inflation as those go up? Or, or do you have software that will do that for you? Um, record asset details. So anything that you install, it's good to know what's there, right? So when you have to go back and maybe service equipment, you want to know what the make and model is so you can know exactly what needs to be done. Of course, with maintenance workflow, you want to do this. Um, and then you want to get those recurring jobs. Set test readings. When your guys go out there for a maintenance job, what are they doing each time? Because the customer is going to ask. They say, well, I'm paying you this much money per month or per year. What exactly do you do? Can you show me readings that you're taking, temperature, maybe pressure readings, whatever it can be? Can, can we show this to the customer? And then make sure your technicians know exactly what they're supposed to do. It's interesting. When we talk about this maintenance workflow, we're starting to get a lot of customers 
talk about preventative maintenance workflow. And this is really cool. And if you want any more information, just put it in the question and answer, put your information in there. Simpro is actually releasing, I think it's, maybe it's even today, IoT, which is going to be pretty unique here in the United States. And what it's going to do is allow you to put sensors so you can retrofit things that are already installed. You don't have to put in new, new equipment. Retrofit those, put sensors on it so it starts to let you know before something goes wrong. Like it starts to, reg it starts to register temperature and it will put a range there. If it stays in this range for a certain amount of time, it will alert you and it can even create jobs for you. So you can get on things before. I had a customer tell me, you know, how do you know when your ice machine is broken? Well, it becomes a water machine, he said. He said, but how do you know when it was broken? Maybe it was broken three days earlier. Now you have you could have solved the problem if you would know what's happening ahead of time. Now you're scrambling. So, yeah, so once again, that's just something additional IoT that's coming out. We've got some really cool things around that. Feel free to re respond to us if you want any more information on that. So with this maintenance workflow, where can the problems be? Well, one, no clear picture of what needs to get done at each maintenance visit. Right, so you need to make sure that your guys know what needs to be done. Or when you're telling your customers and they're signing up for this contract, what am I signing up for? What's gonna, what's gonna, what am I doing this for? How's it going to assist me? What do I need you for? Um, scheduling excess visits to sites has no issues. Are we going out there when we don't need to go out there? Right? And that's where the preventive maintenance will probably help us out at that point, too. Um, missing data-driven upsell opportunities for trend analysis. Now, this is big, right? You go on site. You know they have something that's installed there. You know there's going to be issues. You want to let the customer know, hey, you've got about six months left on this. We can try to fix it again, but you'll be doing better replacing it. Um, you know, you can start to run reports based on things you're installing at multiple locations, start to cross-reference those with issues you're having, so you can start to see which point, which things you should be installing and which devices you shouldn't be installing, right? These things can all assist us. So with trend analysis, you can use software and data, and as you know, data is king, to be able to make those decisions. It's funny, and if you're into sports, they use data for a lot. And some people are for it, some people are against it. But it all makes sense, right? If you have a basketball player and you say at this point in the game, if he's on the right side of the court, he's 80% likely to go to his right side and not pass the ball, so you can defend that better. Well, it's interesting in, in, in your industry also, the more information you have in, the better. As you start dragging all this information in from all these places, you can start using this information in different ways, even give yourself, you know, your own kind of reports that you need that will help you make good decisions. And then ineffective use of labor resources, we see this again and again. Are you sending out technicians for simple maintenance workflows that they shouldn't be, that you could use them on other projects? So do, do, does your staff in the office understand which ones they should be using? Have you set up the employee cards for able to do those kind of things for you? Well, let's talk a little bit about how that can be, how we can assist yourselves with maintenance and with software. So asset maintenance. Now, assets are huge. Now, when I use the term assets, I'm using it uh, from the Simpro vernacular, and assets are anything that you install on a site. So if you install it on a site, let's keep all that information. Let's keep um, um, serial numbers, make, model, when they're out of warranty, when they're in warranty, all those kind of things. And you can actually create with Simpro what's called Maintenance Planner, which will give you a tool that will say, when all of these maintenance items need to be uh, maintained, great, let's put it so you can put it on the beginning of the calendar for the month and start putting it on schedules. It talks about recurring jobs, and you'll receive alerts when, when it's due, too. Let's not forget any of those things need to be done. If you're going to sell a contract, they'll be really upset if you're not out there when you're supposed to be. And here we go. Here's our IoT. It jumps out here again, so we're going to talk about that. Let you know when assets are trending toward failure. Reduce downtime, improve service levels. Once again, any company that you can imagine wants to get additional sources of revenue. And if you can be the company that jumps ahead of things and says, I can tell you before problems happen, man, that's a big deal. That sets you apart from all the rest of the contractors that you're, that you're dealing with in your area, right? Anytime you can move forward. As you know, if you've been in business for many, many years, technology has changed everything, right? And technology has changed it. We've moved forward because of technology. People have certain expectations because of technology now, right? It's funny. When you send your guy on site to go and uh, take care of a uh, service call, well, if I order a pizza, it will tell me exactly when the pizza comes out of the oven, when they're cutting the pizza, when they're leaving the door, when they're driving down the street, when they're outside my door. So I like that. That's pretty cool technology. 
I want everyone to do that now. Why can't everyone do that, right? So these are the kind of things that software or just our life we live in now has given expectations to consumers, and we want to make sure we can meet them where those are at. And if we can be on the cutting edge, you know, there's a reason why when the new iPhone comes out, everyone clamors to the store and gets in line to buy a phone that may have one thing different than the one before it that they'll probably never use. So they want the greatest and the latest, right? And so if you can do that for your customer, you're going to meet them where they want to be met. So let's talk a little bit about reporting. Now, reporting is huge. We've kind of uh, uh, touched on this a little bit during this whole conversation, that you can make better decisions when you have good information, right? There's a reason why presidents and kings have cabinets. They have cabinets because they put people in charge of different positions in the government, so they're able to get back all that information and make informed decisions. So when you have good reporting, it helps you make decisions moving forward. You can look at things that happened in the past, and you can make good decisions based on that information. Understand your profitability. You know, it, it, it's kind of sad. Sometimes we'll go to customers, and they're doing pretty good for themselves, and we'll ask them, hey, what's your goal? You know, where do you want to be? And they'll say, you know, I want to make a lot of money. Okay, that's great. How much money? I said, a lot. Okay, that's great, too. What, what numbers do you have around that? I want to make more than I made last year. All right. Well, how are you going to do that? What kind of jobs do you need to do to, to get there? Are there jobs that you're doing that are not making you any money? You know, there's a term used in the car industry called loft leaders, and those are cars they sell so cheap that they lose money, but at least it gets people in the door. Well, they can't survive just selling those type of cars, can they? And in business, you can't sell them just doing certain types of business just to make people happy. You, it's a business. You have to make money. So you're able to understand where your money is coming from, where you're losing money, and how can you make those changes. Um, improve productivity. Yeah, reporting is huge as far as that goes because productivity is lifeblood of your business. You need to make sure that um, that everything you're doing um, has good return on investment. You know, or, or you also have to realize you have to deal with the mental aspect of this. If you put too much work on someone's shoulders and they start to get frustrated, it affects them. And you can lose an employee that has a whole bunch of data right in their mind, right, that now it's gone and now you have to figure out how to backtrack. I'm getting a reference point for future business decisions. So this is huge right here. So you want, you want to make sure that you can kind of see what's been done. Let's start here and go forward and just try new things in the business. Um, organize actionable information. So what does that mean? So now that means that once you get this data, what are you going to do with it? It's great to know all these things, but now you have to do something with that. So you need to make sure that you're able to put, make actions based on the information that you have. So you're able to move forward. And this is huge for running a company because your employees, in their minds, all have ways in which they think things could be done better. Now, some are going to tell you, some aren't. Some are just going to be frustrated. Some are going to talk within one another. The technicians are going to talk to each other. Like, I don't know why we're doing it this way. When I was on site, I saw this other business, and they were doing it this way, and it was so much better. You know, these, these things happen. So now, once you get data, let's organize that and do something with it. And now you have this information, you can share this with your business partners. So maybe you have some that aren't dealing with the day-to-day, -day, but they need to see where we're moving forward in case they need to ingest more money into the company or what they need to do. So when you have this information, you're able to, to, to make better decisions, which, once again, which is the key for reporting as you move forward. So what kind of reports can be assisting? Well, here's a few we have in SimPro. In SimPro, it comes with, I think, a base of 67 reports. And we also have business intelligent reporting. So if there's a report that's not in there and there's data that you would like to have, you can get that data and make that work for yourself. So one of those is the profit and loss reports. Now, the profit and loss is, of course, you know what that means. You know, where are we making money? Where aren't we making money? You can do this on jobs prior or jobs that are current at that point. Um, and this is all important. And you can even break down those by which technicians are on the job, who sold that job, who's the project manager on that job. Where's the location of that job? Because maybe you're losing a lot of money just in travel back and forth. Um, age receivables. Yeah, we all want to get paid, right? So who's paying us? Another thing that software can really assist you in is making sure the whole company is connected. For example, they get a call from a company and they say, hey, we want you to come out and do a service. Well, they don't know that company's not paying, and they take another job from them, and now we go out there and we just put something else on their tab. They're almost like Norm from, from Cheers, where you just have a tab that keeps growing. Well, wouldn't it be nice if the person taking the order would know exactly who's paid you hasn't? Maybe a notification would pop up and let you know that, hey, this person hasn't been paying, and we're not going to take a new job until they do that. 
So, or be able to have emails sent out to customers that are all um, that have paid 30, 60, 90 days, so they can get reminders on those. These age receivable reports, age receivable reports, will help you with that, in along with working with those notification functions. Um, WIP reports, yeah, work in progress. Let's find out issues that are happening during the job, not at the end of the job when we look back. You know, it's like driving a car. You don't look out the rearview mirror when you drive. You look out the front because that's where you need to be. The, the, the work in progress report is like the, like the rearview mirror. You can look in every once in a while, see exactly where we need to go so you can make plans so you can keep moving forward. Job productivity reports are huge, and this in so many different ways in which these could be used. Um, are your jobs being productive for you? Are your technicians being productive? We have a customer, and what they do is they send out a technician report, and it's a scheduled report, and it goes out every Friday night. And what happens, it lets them know how they did that week and how many jobs they got that week, how many, how many hours they were on the road that week, all this information. It's great because now they have that information. And if you have to have a tough conversation with someone on Monday morning, they know what that tough conversation is going to be about. So there's a lot of ways you can do that. And then contract profitability reports. Yes, are you out selling or, I mean, are you out working your contract? You know, do you send some great contracts and customers are loving it because they're making money on you every time you come out there, every time there's a problem. When you start looking at these reports, you're going to start to say, maybe we need to start adjusting. Maybe we need to have a, different, a couple of different types of contracts that will be able to take care of those things. So, you know, that's all important. So you want to make sure that you have uh, um, that correct information up front. And once again, there are so many other reports, and you can create your own reports that you need, create your own dashboards if you need, and we'll be there to assist you. Um, and then knowing what, you know, what reports you need and what's going to help you. And those will change. You know, you want your business to be flexible as things you may need today, you may not need the next day. And because of this COVID-19 thing that we're going through, maybe the reports that give you information that are a little more um, necessary for the current time. So here's a big question. We'll talk about this for a minute. Is your staff ready for new software? So it, it, it's funny because I had a customer say, I run my business but my technicians run my business. And I said, that's a pretty unique way of putting that there. That yes, you might run your business, but your technicians, your office staff, uh, most companies have at least a couple of people in the office that are the brains of the operation. And you better hope they don't win the lottery overnight and never show back up, which we did have a customer that happened to um, uh, in business. So is this a time to change? Do you need change? You know, every process that we see can always use upgrading, but are there enough issues in what you're doing now that would necessitate that you could use change? Now, it's interesting. It brings up here that it is human nature to avoid change. We really do hate change, don't we? I mean, we don't like it. And they say the prospect of change is worse than actual change itself. And that's true, and that can be true in a lot of different cases. Um, change means changing things we have to do that we're comfortable with. And as humans, we like to stay comfortable. We like to do things that make us happy. We like to do things that don't stretch us if we don't have to be. So it says, without proper planning and support, staff are likely to resist new processes. Would you agree with that? Yeah, because especially when you have multiple members of your staff, all in different aspects of the business, there may be things they say, hey, software, what we're doing now works perfectly for me. And it might work great for them, but it might not work great for three other groups in the business. And they can say, well, it might work good for you, but not for us. So how do you figure out a way that's going to be able to stay right there in the middle and help everyone at the same time? That can be very, very difficult, right? So you need to have this proper planning. Um, I, I like the quote that was brought up here at the Harvard Business Review. Two out of three transformation initiatives fail. Isn't, isn't that interesting? So even the best laid plans can fail if there's not enough planning with it. And once again, you know, I'm a sports guy, so I like watching sports, and you see great athletes and great athletes put a lot of work into making things happen, but they don't always win. And why? Well, because it's a team sport in a lot of cases, or there's different things. The other team could affect them, and a lot of different things happen. Well, when you're planning new software for your company, you have to prepare for those things that could happen. So how can you plan for this even better? But how can you help your team transition? Or share the benefits. People are more likely to go all in with you if they see there's a benefit for themselves. Yes, they want what's good for the business, but they also want what's good for themselves. That's key in the end. How is this going to help me? How will this shave off some time? How will this make my life better? So one thing we can do is elect a leadership team or Simpro champion. Now, what does that mean? 
And we use the term Simpro champion, but any software champion, if you, if you choose to use software, um, get people from each division in your company that can buy in on the software and help the people they work with every day buy in on the software. Help them see how it benefits them. So they can also teach that. So you have a unified voice in doing that. We always say Simpro champion because we'd love to be able to train someone that be able to understand all the aspects of, those, of the business and of the software so they can teach and train to other people. It says plan your goals and measurable obje objectives. So planning, planning is key. You're not just going to drop software on top of someone and say, hey, this is going to work for you. But if you plan it out, if you lay it out in a way that's going to be palatable, that they can, that they can digest it, it's going to make it easier. What, what do they say? How, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time? Now, I don't know what an elephant tastes like. And I don't know if I'd want to eat one. But I think it's just telling us that it's going to take baby steps to get to where you need to get in the end. And measurable objectives. Find some way in which these can be measured so everyone knows we're getting past a certain um, progress point in the business. So it's not just, you know, just kind of ambiguous out there. Uh, the fourth point, communicate, 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 and we'll add one more communicate in there. Let them know as you're going. Let them feel a part of this. Um, let them know that you, you want to hear what they have to say. You, you, know, you know, take that in, and we'll talk about that in a little bit also. And measure progress along the way, once again. Where are we at? Where have we come from? What's next on the agenda? Maybe you're not transferring the whole team at a time, but doing certain divisions. And as those divisions meet their goals, you get to get to the next one. You know, plan that out. One thing we do with Simpro is we do do a complete implementation training um, portion at the beginning of uh, when, you start your, when you start with us. That will enable us to see who's on board, who's there, who, who we need to speak to on this portion and this portion, and help them understand what they need to do to help the business and this change move forward. So what to do when you encounter resistance? You fire everyone to start from scratch. Yeah, that doesn't work uh, <laughs> because it's going to make it pretty difficult to move forward. So what can you do? Well, you can try to just force them and say, it's my, it's my way or the highway, so deal with it. And that may have some results. I don't know how, many, how, how effective it will possibly be. Um, but the first one here, listen to staff's concern. Just listen. People just want to tell you what they're dealing with and how they're feeling and if they think it's going to work. And you may come up with some really good solutions from your team if you just listen to what they have to say. Now, it's still your choice whether you're going to enact any of the things they bring up. But by listening, it makes them feel heard. Redefine the vision. What's the vision of the company? Which is the direction the company is going? Let them know so they don't feel like they're just out there in the, in the sea with a sail and they're going one way or another based on whichever way things are pushing them. Uh, redefine that vision of what you're planning to do internally, how you're planning to deal with things externally. Dealing with this crazy time we're dealing with, you must communicate with them, listen to them, and redefine that vision because we know things are changing at all times. Um, provide additional resources. Make sure they're going to have the training they need. Make sure they're going to have everything. Make sure they're going to have the technology they may need when they're in the field. Uh, make sure they have the resources in the office they can go to if they have questions. Make sure whatever software you choose to go with has resources that you can deal with. A simple way of 24-6 customer care. So you're able to call us and say, hey, I'm having issues, and have someone on the phone with you and walk you through whatever problems you're having. Or we also have the learning toolbox, which will give small courses that your team can take on different aspects of the software so they can understand it with a few little quizzes and those things too. And show appreciation. People just want to be told thank you. People just want to be told they are appreciated. And as they're making this change, understand that it may be difficult for them, but you appreciate them for doing it. Find ways to show that you appreciate them. We have one customer, and they have their guys using the apps now in the field, and they have some technicians that have been, I think they're about, you know, I think they worked on Noah's Ark. They've been in the business for that long. Um, and and what, what, what they said was they started giving them Starbucks gift cards whenever they would um, get certain results done in the app. He said, you'd be shocked to find what you can get with a $25 Starbucks gift card or if you're in Canada, Tim Hortons gift card, or wherever you, uh, wherever you are. So show appreciation. Let them know that you appreciate what they're doing and the, all the efforts that they're bringing around so they can make it work for the whole entire team. So what have we learned today? Well, we've learned that we want to take advantage of field service management software. And it can help you with streamlining what you're doing, your project and your maintenance workflow, Enable you so you don't have to have people in the office all at the same time. You can stagger those. Dealing with the customers on site, dealing with the whole COVID-19 situation, and it can streamline and make you paperless, which is really where a lot of companies are trying 
to go, but still be assured that you're not going to lose any data anytime. I'm um, improved project management efforts. Know what's going on during the job at all times. Why? Why things are happening? When things are happening? What changes need to be made as you move forward? And then you can also generate reports for better decision making. Utilize the data to make good decisions. It's, 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 it's key to continue running your business and being profitable and making moves. And then the one that's not even mentioned here, we just spoke about, work with your team to make those changes. Let them know these things are happening. Let them know why these things are happening. Find out a way to make sure they understand how it benefits them, and then make a plan so you can move forward and set measurables there. So once again, so, so, so that's part of our presentation. Now, we'd love to have any questions you may have, and hopefully I'll be able to answer those questions. If not, hopefully I can get someone that can help us with those. You know, about what's going on in, this, in the situation with COVID-19 now, about what your business is doing. Once again, if you want to talk about football or basketball, I'm your guy too. With anything you want to discuss, uh, I feel free to take some of those questions now. And thank you so much, Nick. I think um, just a quick reminder to add your questions to the Q&A box in your control panel. And uh, it looks like we've got a couple of questions already. So. Question number one, um, I have two separate divisions for our install jobs and our maintenance service jobs. How does it work to manage two different divisions in Simpro? Well, good question. So there's some software that's, that, that are uh, really good with dealing with service, others that do products. Simpro, we view them kind of similar. We view a project job as a whole bunch of little service jobs under one, one roof. And you can take care of each one of those and manage your phases as you go. And then service jobs are quick. They can be break fix. They can just be one time going back and forth. So simple, we're going to deal with them in the same way. Once your customer's in the system, we're going to send it down the workflow, whether it's a project or a service workflow. And then we're going to configure the system to work with your flows, whatever your, your project workflow is, whatever your service workflow is. And then once we get that configured, it's just going to kind of fall down that roadmap. Yes, there might be times where things have to be changed, and you're going to be able to do that on the fly, but you're able to manage both of those in Simpro. Awesome. And our next question, is this practical for a small company? Yeah, it is, actually. It's interesting because uh, at Simpro, we have companies that have two employees. We have companies that have uh, um, thousands of employees. Uh, and... and I'll tell you this, workflow is the same regardless of the size, right? There's maybe a few extra steps put in because you have a large company, but in the end, it's going to be the same. And the, and the problem is we have customers that start out small, and they're small, and they're doing whatever they're doing with paper. Then all of a sudden, they start to get larger. They start to add new text. They start to get trucks. And then they get overwhelmed because they didn't put these things in place. It's always better to get software solutions in place early so you have a, a rhyme and reason as to, as to what you're doing. It's going to assist you regardless of the size of your company just for the fact that you're going to have similar things that happen with each job. Why not automate those things so you're not waking up at 2 o'clock in the morning um, thinking, oh, my goodness, what did I just forget? I forgot to fill in the blank, right? There's so many things that could happen. So absolutely, we're designed. You still get the same level of attention as a, with a small company as you do with a larger one. So it's still going to sit down with you, work through your workflows, get the software working, explain how all those things work so you truly feel comfortable with new software. Awesome. Um, next question. If we decided to purchase SimPro, how long does it normally take a business to learn how to do all of these processes? Uh, our staff has used software, but this is different from what we use now. It is overnight. We just click our fingers and all of a sudden new software is implanted. Don't we wish? Like the movie The Matrix where you just have to like put it on the computer and it downloads into people's brains. Um, what we're gonna say, depending on when you get signed up, you know, there's a process involved. We're gonna have a conversation with you and then we're gonna spend half a day remotely having that workflow conversation with you, finding out what your workflows are. And then we're gonna come on site and if we can't come on site due to COVID-19, we'll do it remotely and start the training process. Now you could get up and running in a couple of days there um, and then we'll come back maybe in a month or so and do it. We're going to say maybe about 60 days. Larger companies, of course, are going to take longer. But 60 days means from the start we sign 
for the homework you have to do. And we're not going to lie to you. There's definitely heavy lifting at the beginning, especially if you've been running a business for a long time, getting your customers into the system, working with your accounting packages, um, getting, getting your supplier catalogs done, all those things. But once you get those done, it starts to run. Um, so we'll say 60 days. It depends on how much work you're able to do, whether you're going through a busy time in the year, whether you can only put a little bit of um, um, time towards making it work, or if you do have more time to be able to make that happen, that can happen also. So we'll say about 60 days, but, you know, it's, it depends on the customer. Okay, great. Um, and then another question, can you give a little more detail about your mobile app and how techs can use it for maintenance service? Yeah, so the mobile app, you know, feel free, if you have any questions and you want to see a demo so you can kind of see it for yourself, please just put in the question and answer. I think you can just put in your name and information and we'll get back to you and some, either myself or someone who's going to be close to your area will get back to you. But the way the mobile app works, it works on Android, it works on Apple. You're able to use it to clock in and clock out for the day. You're able to even do quoting in it and sales. But it's a start. It's like a, it's like a digital work order. It's going to pop up. They're going to start travel on there. It's going to send a text message to the customer or email, letting them know you're on your way, even with a picture of your smiling face on the way there. You're able to, um, you're able to go through assets. So any assets on site, you're able to run tests that you've already predefined in the app, so you're able to do that. You're able to do, at the beginning, audits. So you could do PPE or COVID-19 audits before you start a job or, safe, or, or job safety analysis or anything you can imagine you're able to do in the system. You're able to add parts from your vehicles to the job also if you're using a part because, you know, $5 parts add up. And then you're able to close the job or send out information to someone in the office if parts need to be ordered. So there's a whole bunch of things it does. I know I just ran through a whole bunch of those. If you want to see any more, please just reach out to us and we'll be able to get you a good demo so you can see how it could affect and assist your company. Awesome. Um, and then we've got a question on Simpro IoT here. How does Simpro IoT work with AI and integrate with BIM? Oh, look at you asking those big questions and all those acronyms. Well, I'll just say some of the things I know about it. And once again, put your information in so we can get you to um, um, the, the release that we have so you can kind of see those things. But the way it's going to work with, with, with intelligence, it's just going to report on um, it's just a report on predefined, um, what's the word I'm looking for, on, on, on predefined checklists that you may have, for example. Like it might be pressure sensors. We'll put that in there, and it's going to start to register and see, hey, um, the pressure has been low for this amount of time, so we're going to create a job based on the fact that it's not supposed to be in there. So that predefined um, um, uh, um, position it was supposed to be, it's not. Um, is it? Um, too hot, is it too cold? This works especially for refrigeration. Are we seeing temperatures rising so we can see where there may be an issue? Are there surges? And we're going to understand those things go up and down. That's where we're going to put that, that date range or that time range in there. So as far as working with those, with those other, you know, what, what, what we'll do is this. We will, um, what, what we'll do is this. Get a hold of us, and then we'll kind of go from there if you need any more details as far as that goes. Cool. And then we've got another question. Um, we have a fabrication shop as part of our operation. Is there any way to integrate production into the software platform? Oh, so it, it depends on what level of fabrication you're doing. Now, Simpro usually doesn't work well with fabrication because we use um, SKU numbers that come in, of course, from, um, uh, for, for, from our suppliers make those. So it just kind of depends on what stage of the fabrication it's in. Like, are you just putting parts together or are you, are you completely fabricating those uh, um, type of things from scratch? So there probably have to be a little more detail on that answer so I can make sure we give you the right answer on that. Um, we, ha we do have some companies that do fabrication. We do a wider range of different industries that we work with. So we could see if it's something we've already done. So once again, just kind of get us your information so we can get a little more specific on that so we can give you a good answer on that. Okay, cool. And we've got one more question here. Um, is Simpro or does Simpro replace traditional BMS software for healthcare and hospitality projects? We've got lots of acronyms. Ooh, I don't know. Yeah, I know the acronyms. I, 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 need, I need to get on this a little better, don't I? Um, you know what? I don't know if it would do that. You know what? Um, it would work with that. Now, the thing about Simpro, Simpro has an open API. 
So that open API does allow you to interconnect with other bit, with other software that may have the things you need. Now, as far as managing those uh, those locations, we do work with some customers that do facilities management, so it'd be kind of similar in some of those ways. Um, you know, that, that's, that's, that's a really good question. I don't think it's going to be placed it, but it could work alongside it and do some of those other parts that it doesn't do. Okay, cool. And it looks like we've covered all of our questions for today. So, um, Nick, is there anything else you wanted to cover before we wrap up? No, no, no. I appreciate it. And thanks for giving me, thanks for putting me through some homework with some of those questions. Feel free to reach out to us so we can get great answers on those. We'll get some sales engineers that can answer those questions. But this has been wonderful. I really appreciate it. Thank you all for taking this time to kind of have a conversation with us today about the way things have changed. And we always welcome feedback, so please send us any time. Yeah, that's awesome. And thank you, Nick, and thank you to all the ASHRAE members and everyone out there for, for joining us. If you do have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, there's some contact information there on the screen or simprogroup.com. Um, and ASHRAE will also be sending out a follow-up email with a link to view the recording of today's webinar. Uh, but thanks again for joining us today, and, and we'll see you next time.